steaming motivation for space. Um, you know, um, I've uh, been into the space sector, let's call it, for quite some time, um, in terms of education, of course, and eventually started taking up entrepreneurial, you know, venture called Rahe Kamar. Um, it started off as a Facebook page, uh, literally. <laughs> Um, we were experimenting. Um, like I said earlier, there was no particular book to, to, to use as a manual and as to how to start a space company in Pakistan. Um, you know, uh, would, would, it, would it be an NGO or would it be, um, uh, you know, I don't know, something else? Or sh should it be a single member company maybe or have multiple directors? So we sort of experimented ourselves into it. We, we still are. Um, we only registered like uh, a year before COVID arrived, um, you know, as an official space company in Pakistan, and we we're like very happy about it. But literally, like four or five years before that, we were still w wondering. But that didn't stop us from doing doing outreach programs and experimenting uh, because of my media strength. Uh, let's call it an experience. Um, we went online. We traveled to US, we traveled to uh, UAE. We were the only Pakistani company to uh, actively re uh, represent ourselves and Pakistan when the UAE mission to Mars was announced. Um, you know, it was, it, was, it was an amazing opportunity to actually see the Arab world getting into the space sector. Um, we started uh, on the lines of Carl Sagan's uh, program. We started a show called Rahe Kamar on um, a, a local university radio channel, um, um, Rifa. And um, I mean, that, that, that went on for two seasons, and we were pretty happy. Um, we've produced products, let's call it, people who've, who've excelled, and we're really happy about it. We take pride in saying that one of our, one of our uh, um, members, let's call it, at, at this moment, um, has actually like moved out into the space sector and is working in Thailand. Some who actu actively hosted the radio shows and attended them are now in Germany, and you know, so we're pretty happy about it that uh, at least we we did seed a few things. Now, uh, before boring you any further, just you know, th those pictures should should speak for themselves, um, but. My topic, again, steaming, uh, motivation for space. So now, um, the global space economy. Uh, last year was um, evaluated as at approximately 498 billion US dollars. That's, that's a lot of money. Um, and we're not tapping into this, are we? Um, Maybe we are, but no one knows. You would you would happen to see articles online comparing Saparko with ISRO and other stuff, but no 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 counter narrative coming in, and it's it's it's, it's it kind of worried us, uh, to be honest. Um, when we uh, went out to speak on behalf of uh, Saparco, literally, like, no, they're doing great stuff. It's just that they don't want to share with people. There must be rules and regulations which we are not aware of. And we sort of got our way into it and understood that, yes, there are. And they're doing great stuff. We're exporting things. We're do providing service to other countries. But no one knows. And that's the problem. That's the problem. People are not sharing. And not sharing. Does, it results in the fact that, that this, this particular negativity is being spread across, you know, in, on TV channels, etc. So we, we think, oh, Pakistan with the Swimbini Banti. Yeah, right, ask me. Um, uh, so, you know, that, that, that's, that's, uh, that's not true. So today, allow me to uh, welcome you all to a transformative journey of exploration. I'm going to introduce you to five different minds uh, who um, you know have done have this remarkable collective collective resilience so first that's Salman and Tuba and Etusham and uh, you know I'll go get go on with the rest so Salman loves science and reads a lot about it Tuba loves technology. And surprisingly, Etusham 
that the guy on the corner loves engineering. So he just engineers his things. He fiddles around with machineries and things. Um, Ejaz is extremely creative. He loves arts. And Memuna, even while she's walking, she thinks in numbers. Oh, OK, angle of, you know, this is there, that thing is there. So surprise, surprise, these five are the fantastic five, STEAM. So science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, together they could form the real collective resilience that is needed to get into that space sector. And we're, str we're struggling, but we'd love to you know, hear from you. We're still experimenting. You can tell us, oh, you, your formula doesn't work here and there. Definitely in the business side, <laughs> definitely. Uh, I'm not a business grad, just, just trying to learn. But yeah, uh, you know, I'd be happy to listen. But here's the fantastic five who've, who, who could join hands, but they don't. Why don't they? That's because at home, the science kid is told, arts wale se dosti na karna, theek hai? You, you might, you might you know, stand uh, alone, or you might lose your grades, things like that. Maths, same thing. Oh, usse na karna, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we've set standards on three or four particular areas, and that's pretty much it. We're not bringing them together into a single you know, collective resilience sort of thing. Uh, bringing them together to work and actually develop uh, something you know, amazing that could have happened, maybe not just the space sector, but others. You know. So space, definitely multidisciplinary. Just think about it. It's not something that, it's not a sector where you'll just find scientists. It's not a sector where you'll find uh, just uh, engineers. That's not true. Um, if you talk to people who uh, are nowadays probably in Pakistan Air Force or Suparco or any other organization, probably NASA, European Space Agency, they will tell you, and uh, depending on their age, maybe, maybe, but that they somehow got inspired by A.G. Wells or Star Trek or Star Wars. <sighs> Who were those guys who produced that? They were from the art side, but they joined hands with you know actual scientists that hey, this is even possible. Let's just work it out. Back when such production was not even possible, yet 2023, not a single science fiction thing or video, movie, TikTok video is can be seen anywhere. Why? Because have we have we lost the imagination? Are we? Are, what, what's wrong with us? Is is? I'm not saying. I'm not demeaning anyone who does those TikTok videos with you know demented actions in front of the camera, but is that it? Is that how creative we could we could get? Can't we think beyond the skies? And that's where our uh, startup comes in, right, Omar? And we uh, we try to push the boundaries, and we tell people to you know. Delve into things, be part of the Fantastic Five, increase that to Fantastic 23 million, or, you know, I don't know, more. But that's not the end of story. Nope. In our quest to unlock the mysteries of the cosmos, these five minds, and you too, you could just be part of them, uh, will help, you know, all of us navigate the realm of peak performance. Now, how do you? you know, quantify that, peak performance. Listen carefully. Harnessing the immense potential of human brain power and making crucial decisions, taking crucial decisions that shape timelines and our trajectory as a nation. Remember, our target, what is our target as humans? Keep exploring. That's, that's it. You are born an explorer. You walk, you explore. You crawl, rather, you crawl and then you walk. Um, I don't know if someone has done it the other way. But, uh, you know, you explore. My kids, they fell. We said, fine, just, you know, they'll learn. So they explored. This is, this is part of our DNA. This is what we are. It doesn't matter if you're exploring on Earth or out there. That's, that's what we're doing. So remember, our target as humans, now, 
in this cosmic odyssey, let's call it, the Fantastic Five will be confronted. These kids will be confront, fr front confronted with, and the same thing has probably, you've probably been confronted with the same thing as well, um, with the need to compensatory control uh, a strategic approach, we call it, in engineering particularly, that allows us humans to optimize our cognitive capacity by simplifying complex tasks. Yes, that's, that could be the magical formula. It works at least in space by recognizing our biological prime time and energy peaks. Now, this might sound very poetic, but it is true. We have our energy peaks, our prime times. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but at two, if, you're, if you wake up at seven, sometime around daytime, you'll probably fall asleep and not be productive. There's been research going on. Uh, you know, so you need to find your biological prime time. Some people say, well, that might be their you know, biological prime time um, and energy peaks. But it's great. I mean, we all have our own clocks. Um, we can't do the same way, I guess. Yeah, if that makes sense. But anyway, so the Fantastic Five can team up that's the basic thing. We haven't been teaming up. The universities that I usually lecture and teach and train in, I ask them to uh, let me create a team. And they're like, no, 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 no. We'll create our own team. They're so, so afraid of teaming up with, or maybe they're just, there are some dislikes, likes or dislikes. They don't know that when you are employed anywhere, you will probably end up with a good person or a bad person, or many and many versions in between, uh, many shades in between. Um, you just have to live with it. But you know, the ultimate goal is teaming up to do something great. As a company, as a nation, you might not like one person, but if that person has talent in some area that you're weak, you might want to team up with that person to achieve a task instead of teaming up with a friend. Jo final year project me ja ke sirf khado ke kahega ye dekhi humne ye banaya tha. You know that's I I don't I, you know I've gone through this so I know. <laughs> so um, align your rhythms and these these five fantastic five should align their rhythms and assign focused attention to tasks that demand their best performances will come up, they'll join hands and build something great. And that's how it works. And probably sounds more like, uh, you know, like the, the, the famous E is equal to MC squared, but it is. It is. It's just that it's a simplified version uh, to, to explain that you can mix intelligence and emotion together, the, you know, to, to actually reach your peak potential. As humans, to revive our brain power and engage in cognitively demanding work, a lot of brain power, you know, thinking, doing things, we must navigate the paradox of choice. When you end up embracing binary, binary comparisons, you're like, yes or no, it really helps. It really helps because um, you need to prioritize. I learned it the hard way. I wanted to do everything when I did my engineering. I wanted to run a company. I wanted to sing a song. I wanted to make a movie. I wanted to write a book. I wanted to do everything. I wanted even to be an astronaut. And I was like, I, I can't do any of that. that if I don't prioritize and decide what is needed immediately and what could I push forward. Making money became my top priority. Let's just think of the Eisenhower matrix. You don't need to read this. I'll just explain. So don't worry about this. Um, it's a powerful tool. Um, for those uh, with, who, who have the business background, you probably know or, or you've heard of you know, similar processes where you're like, um, you compare the pros and cons. But with the Eisenhower matrix, you have to decide which part is urgent and important and then which part is important and maybe less urgent and accordingly. So there are quadrants. Each quadrant explains navigate from your choices and prioritize what you want and what you don't want and in pursuit of excellence, of course. Now, let, let's, just, let's just think about it in a, for a while that, and, and think that the Fantastic Five are waiting 
for you to suggest what to do next. So this quadrant is for the important and urgent. You would note down, take this as a practice, take this as a practice, you need to note down, you take it as a practice categorically. If you want to write it down, write it down. Eisenhower matrix. So what you need to do is create these quadrants and then write down what is important for a particular to point or topic or, uh, or target that you want to achieve and timelines. This is great for project management and time management together. Uh, the second coordinate, quadrant, important but not urgent. So you need to divide your things into quadrants with importance and urgency. Importance, the higher the importance, goes up. The higher the urgency, goes on to the other quadrants. This task itself, formulating a comprehensive national policy. If we want to build the space industry, forget about university. You, you're creating students, but where do they go? Where do they go? Someone who's studied aerospace engineering, the only potential job opening that that person will think of is probably the defense sector, which is great. I'm not saying it's not great, but how many positions can that can 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 the you know can the defense sector hold? Um, what about the private sector? How do you how does that work? Well, we formulate, and this is what we suggest. So our priority should be formulating. A, co a comprehensive national space strategy. And that's what we're working on uh, slowly and gradually at Rahekomer. We've decided, we've, we've not really stopped, but thawed a lot of our pr projects, which were outreach, like going to universities and saying, hey, let's, let's show you the moon. What next? Um, nothing much is happening. There are a lot of clubs. Are we just a club? As a company, what do we do? We create a think tank. Uh, and that think tank, creates a policy paper, suggests it to the government. Here, this is how things could move forward. Creates a framework, creates objectives and incentives, attracts investments, very important. But no one would be ready to inv invest in the space sector. No one is ready to invest in Rahe Qamar anyway because there is no national space policy. They're like, what's your country's space policy? Why would we want to invest in your company? You're a private company, fine. Doesn't make sense. So that's really important. It should, I mean, we, you know, the policy, and then what do you, what, what does national space policy comprise of? Well, it could, it, you could include satellite development related things, regulatory matters, with launch capabilities, any embargoes applied or not applied, international collaborations, commercial space activities, and a lot more. All of these are really important. And then, of course, establishing, most important. So we've been in contact. We're trying to establish partnerships with international space agencies and organizations. We've, if, if I could just, you know, if I, I'd be happy to just go back to the first screen. I could show you that this, there was a moment I was able to actually interact with someone in, at NASA, and this was my first. And I was like really happy that, OK, they've got Rahe Kumar entered in the database, for us it was like a milestone. And that's our line, you know, like every step we take is a milestone for us. But, you know, so establishing partnerships. You get to know the world, the world gets to know you. There's exchange, international networking. You go to events like space congresses. You hold events in Pakistan, like such as space congresses, conferences, and seminars, and let people know that things need to be done. The national policy should create um, avenues for investment in research and development of space technology. They are doing it. Uh, there's, uh, there, there's a great, uh, it's the aviation city that's in the making and, and ASTAP and other things which are in the formation, which is great. Yet again, the, the national space policy is still missing. So I, I really hope that they'll be working on those lines sooner or later. So just quickly skipping to, and what's the least important Let's just, you know, so I, I, I'll probably put this online and you can just read it. But I mean, the most important, you've just heard me talk. Let's just go to the least important. And the least important would be engaging in unnecessary bureaucratic procedures on, or paperwork. 
getting caught up in non-essential meetings, absolutely, or activities, okay? So that's like literally non-essential, anything that's not related to space, getting caught up with that would slow you down if you want to enter into the space sector. And, 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 then, and it has actually slowed us down quite a bit. Nonetheless, this actually should be the perfect tool to, for you, um, not just for the general space sector, but specifically if you want to create solutions for, uh, for STEM and STEAM uh, related uh, you know, uh, applications or solutions or services that you'd want to uh, develop, go ahead. We could actually work on creating an, a conducive environment. These kind of solutions, no one knows, but this is genuinely from Pakistan. And, and if these could be perhaps extended to the private sector or l let the private sector get into this, not in not the facilities, but actually create such solutions because these are now available and can be done. We've we have we have as an organization been happily creating uh, you know maps, um, interactive maps and we're we'll be soon you know adding AI to it for light imagery um, and visualization. So, you know, the, 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 the market is huge. There's, there's a lot of potential. The entire Africa could be your client. This picture, this picture, please, please, please bear with me. I mean, I, this picture is so important because it is just a picture of an astronaut probably watering the plant. Okay? But did you know did you know that this, this, this plant was actually grown on the moon by China? That it, it was actually grown on the moon. So, so this, is, this, might be a, this might be fiction, but this is an actual real picture on the, of, the, of the plant being grown on the moon. And that, I'll just, just wrap it up here. This leads to the, you know, the prospects that if, you, if, if we could get those fantastic five in our country to join hands, and not just fantastic five, the fantastic 23 million or more, I don't know, how many, the, you know whatever the number of people, and despite, I, I don't know how many will be, would be interested in STEAM, but I mean, I, I'm happy if the number grows and we could team up to build the space industry for Pakistan.